Rocks and Shoals is the 126th episode of the syndicated American science fiction television series Star Trek – Deep Space Nine, the second episode of the sixth season's opening six-episode story arc, beginning shortly after the events of the previous episode. Set in the 24th century, the series follows the adventures of the crew of the Starfleet-managed Bajoran space station Deep Space Nine. As with the other five episodes of the opening arc, this episode's story alternates between the events on the recaptured Tarek Nor and the Federation's attempts to fight the Dominion. Topic. Plot Captain Sisko and his crews captured Jemadar ship crash onto a barren planet hidden inside a nebula, landing in a small sea. The senior officers and a handful of crew members survive and seek shelter in a cave, although Lieutenant Commander Dax is severely injured. Unbeknownst to the survivors, a crew of Jemadar and their Vorta, Kievan, have also survived a recent crash landing on the planet and similarly taken up shelter in a cave. The Jemadar first and second are dead, but Kievan has not promoted third Remadeklin to the rank of first because Remadeklin at some point questioned Kievan's orders. Keevan, seriously injured, strictly rations the Ketracel White, to the dismay of the Jemadar. Garrick and Nog are captured while scouting the unfamiliar territory. Back at the Dominion camp, Garrick reveals to Keevan that the Starfleet contingent includes a doctor. Suffering from having low levels of Ketracel White, the Jemadar are, despite a direct order, unable to refrain from firing on the Starfleet personnel who set out in search for Garrick and Nog, and are also unable to shroud. The skirmish ends with no Starfleet injuries and an uncharacteristic Jemadar withdrawal. Keevan demands to know the identity of the soldier who first opened fire, but Remadeklin refuses, citing the order of things. The Vorta may discipline the unit leader, but only the unit leader disciplines the soldiers under his command. Keevan orders Remadeklin to approach the Starfleet crew. When Remadeklin arrives at the Starfleet camp, he delivers a message to Sisko, Keevan will free the Ferengi and the Cardassians in exchange for Dr. Bashir, from whom Keevan needs treatment, and Sisko, with whom Keevan wants to speak. Sisko takes the opportunity to try to drive a wedge between Remadeklin and his Vorda, relating to the Jemadar the events from To the Death. Specifically, the Jemadar firsts murder of Wayown. Sisko asserts that it must be hard to maintain discipline in their current surroundings, and suggests that Remadeklin not pay so much heed to the Vorta. Remadeklin, however, remains loyal to Kievan, and Sisko agrees to the prisoner exchange. Bashir successfully treats Kievan's wound, although the Vorta is still very weak. After dismissing the Jemadar, Keevan tells the Starfleet officers of his minuscule supply of Ketracel White. He shows them a transmitter and admits he doesn't have enough white to sustain the soldiers long enough for them to fix the transmitter and send a distress call. He further explains that once the supply is gone, the Jemadar will go on a killing rampage. Keevan tells them that he will order the Jemadar to attack their position, however, the Vorta will give Sisko their attack plan, allowing them to kill the Dominion soldiers. Keevan will also provide them with the transmitter the Jemadar have been working on. Assuming the Starfleet personnel can repair it and call for rescue, Keevan will become their captive, saving his life from the Jemadar. This information does not sit well with some of the Starfleet crew. Chief O'Brien, asserts that, There are rules, in war and that getting information from Keevan that will allow them to slaughter his men somehow violates these rules. Garrick, on the other hand, is perfectly content to take advantage of this knowledge. 
Cisco interrupts the discussion to point out that when it comes down to choosing between us and them, there is no choice. This is the opposite of what he told Worf in the fourth season episode, Rules of Engagement. The stranded crew are not the only ones facing moral qualms, on Tarek nor, Major Kira gradually comes to realize that by not opposing the Dominion occupation, she has become a collaborator, she identifies uncomfortable parallels between her own passivity and those who collaborated with the Kardashians during their occupation of Bayor. Fadek Yasim in particular has strong words for Kira, culminating with her suicide by hanging on the promenade. Before jumping to her death, Yasim declares, Evil must be opposed. Kira wakes up the next morning but leaves Ops shortly into her shift. After mulling over her situation, she confides to Odo that she is going to start actively resisting the Dominion. Back on the barren world, Sisko and his crew have established a lethal crossfire along the Jemadar's approach to their camp. Sisko calls out to Remadeklin, who agrees to confer in the open. Sisko tells him of Kievan's betrayal, and argues that the Vorda does not deserve their loyalty. Remadeklin confesses that he recognized Kievan's attack plan as deliberately leading them into a trap. Sisko offers to put the Jemadar into stasis, preserving their lives. Despite this, however, the Jemadar states that Kievan does not need to earn his loyalty. The Jemadar's loyalty to the Vorda is genetically bred into them as part of the order of things. Remadeklin says he will follow Kievan's orders, knowing that neither he nor any of his men will survive. Sisko returns to his position, after Remadeklin prepares his men by declaring, Our deaths are glory to the founders. The Jemadar attack. They are quickly mowed down by the Starfleet crew, although Ensign Gordon is killed. Keevan appears shortly thereafter, strolling among his dead men with the transmitter in hand. He shouts to Sisko that if he'd had just two more vials of Ketracel White, Sisko and his crew never would have had a chance. Sisko orders a burial detail for the dead. Topic. Reception The episode helped advance the character of Major Kira Nerys. According to actress Nana Visitor, Kira's maturity had to kick in, because she couldn't just react the way the younger Kira would. There was too much at stake. There was too much to lose. So even though it wasn't as much fun to play, I found it was an important growth point. In 2016, Hollywood Reporter rated, Rocks and Shoals. Along with six Connetting episodes as the Among the Twenty Greatest Episodes or Sequences of Episodes in Star Trek, Deep Space Nine. This six-episode arc is noted for its serialized format compared to shorter two-episode pair stories that had been more common to the Star Trek franchise up to that time. The six-episode arc. A Time to Stand. Rocks and Shoals Sons and Daughters Behind the Lines Favor the Bold Sacrifice of Angels Topic Notes Star Trek, Deep Space Nine DVD Set, Volume 6, Disc 1, Selection 2 Topic. External links Rocks and Shoals. On IMDb Rocks and Shoals. At TV.com Rocks and Shoals. At Memory Alpha, a Star Trek wiki. 
Rocks and Shoals at Star Trek.com.